This is a story of a young boy who lived with his mom and dad. One day, mom and the dad get into an argument and file for a divorce. Mom gets to keep the kid while dad takes his stuff and leaves. Before going to bed, the boy sees a shooting star in the sky and wishes for his mom and dad to be back together again. The next morning, the boy goes downstairs to see his mother and father are back together and are happy with each other. The boy, however, isn't happy but confused. He takes one good look at his father, goes to the mom and whispers to her, who's this guy? <laughs> An elderly man remembers the good old days. When I was young, my mom could send me to a shop with a single dollar, and I would bring back five pounds of potatoes, two breads, a bottle of milk, a piece of cheese, and ten eggs. Nowadays, that's impossible, there are simply too many security cameras. <laughs> it was a few days before Valentine's Day and a young woman was taking an afternoon nap. After she woke up, she told her husband, I just dreamed that you gave me a pearl necklace for Valentine's Day. What do you think it means? Her husband smiled. Oh, I have a feeling you'll know later tonight, he said with a wink. His wife squealed with joy. That evening, the man came home with a small package and gave it to his wife. Delighted, she opened it, only to find a book titled, The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> a white-haired old man walked into a jewelry store on a Friday, with a beautiful young lady at his side. I'm looking for a special ring for my girlfriend, he said. Our jeweler looked through our stock and took out an outstanding ring priced at $5,000. I don't think you understand I want something very unique, the man said. At that, our now very excited jeweler went and fetched our special stock from the safe. Here's one stunning ring at $40,000. The girl's eyes sparkled, and the man said that he would take it. How are you paying? asked our jeweler. I'll pay by check. But of course the bank will want to make sure that everything is in order, so I'll write a check and you can phone the bank tomorrow, and then I'll fetch the ring on Monday. Monday morning, our very disappointed jeweler phoned the man. You lied, there's no money in that account. I know, sorry, but can you imagine what a fantastic weekend I had? <laughs> Little Johnny comes downstairs crying. His mother, concerned at her boy's tears, asked, What's the matter little Johnny? Dad was hanging pictures, and just hit his thumb bang on with the hammer, said little Johnny through his tears. His mother was touched by the boy's sensitivity, but didn't like seeing him cry. That's not so serious. She tried to soothe him. Now I know you're upset, but a big boy like you shouldn't cry at something like that. That's something to laugh about. I did, sobbed Johnny. On their 50th wedding anniversary and during the banquet celebrating it, Tom was asked to give his friends a brief account of the benefits of a marriage of such long duration. Tell us Tom, just what is it you have learned from all those wonderful years with your wife? Tom responds, well, I've learned that marriage is the best teacher of all. It teaches you loyalty, meekness, forbearance, self-restraint, forgiveness, and a great many other qualities you wouldn't have needed if you'd stayed single. Little Johnny's chemistry teacher wanted to teach his class a lesson about the evils of liquor, so he set up an experiment that involved a glass of water, a glass of whiskey, and two worms. Now, class. Observe what happens to the two the worms, said the professor, putting the first worm in the glass of water. The worm in the water moved about, twisting and seemingly unharmed. He then dropped the second work in the whiskey glass. It writhed for a moment, then quickly sank to the bottom and died. Now kids, what lesson can we derive from this experiment, he asked. Little Johnny raised his hand and wisely responded, drink whiskey and you won't get worms. <laughs> the wife and I had come to town to pick up a few things. We came out of one store and saw a cop writing a ticket for a legal parking right in front of us on the curb. So we asked him nicely to give a couple of retirees a break. But he paid us no attention and kept writing. Just loud enough for him to hear, my wife said, what a bozo. 
The cop looked up, stared at my wife, then started writing out another ticket. I said, honey, this guy probably just learned to read and write, and he's so proud of himself, he's showing off. The cop tore off the second ticket and started on a third. We kept making comments and he kept writing tickets till he was up to about half a dozen. Finally, glaring at us, the cop left, and we walked down the street. We didn't care about the tickets. We always take the bus into town, and anyway, that car was one of those obnoxious hummers. Being retired, we always try to find ways to keep ourselves amused. We feel it's important. <laughs> one morning, 75-year-old Marvin is reminded by his secretary that it is his wife's birthday. At lunch, Marvin goes to the local mall and tries to find a gift for her. Upon passing a lingerie store, Marvin realizes that his wife has never bought any lingerie in her life. He gets the idea to buy his wife something new to make her feel good and young. Marvin goes into the store and tells the clerk to wrap up the most expensive, sheerest negligee she has. Marvin takes the gift and excitedly runs home to his wife. Upon finding her in the kitchen he tells her to take the gift upstairs and unwrap it. He'll wait in the kitchen. His wife thanks him and goes up to the bedroom. Once the package is opened she realizes that this is something she's never had before. She also sees that it is so sheer it leaves nothing to the imagination. She thinks for a moment and then decides that she'll really surprise Marvin and go downstairs without any clothes on at all. So she leaves the negligee on the bed and starts down the stairs stark. She calls out, Marvin, come out to the hallway and look. Marvin walks out to the staircase, looks up at his wife, and exclaims, all that money and they didn't even iron it. <laughs> the teacher asked the class to use the word fascinate in a sentence. Molly put up her hand and said, my family went to my granddad's farm and we all saw his pet sheep. It was fascinating. The teacher said, that was good, but I wanted you to use the word fascinate, not a fascinating thought. Caroline raised her hand. She said, my family went to see New York City and I was fascinated. The teacher sighed and said, well, that was good Caroline, but I wanted you to use the word fascinate thought. Little Johnny raised his hand, now the teacher knew he was a bit of a scamp but she was desperate to finish this lessons, so she finally decided there was no way he could damage the word fascinate. She sighed. Go ahead, Johnny. Little Johnny smiles, my Aunt Carolyn has a sweater with 10 buttons, but her breasts are so big she can only fascinate. The teacher sat down and cried. Hey, there, I put a lot effort into making these videos so please subscribe for more jokes and stay happy, thank you.